Hey guys, William Justice here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion, and I'm sorry to say, but I've failed with this channel, and I think it's time to push the reset button. So we're gonna dump my old animation. We're gonna get rid of the old intro, and I'm gonna create something new and fresh. We're gonna get a fresh start to try to move past what I'm seeing as my failures. But along with the logo, I'm gonna create some uh, brand new assets and try to come up with uh, some consistent branding for my channel. Something I've wanted to do for a long time, so I'm gonna do it. Why did I fail? Well, let's take a look at my YouTube numbers. Uh, about a year ago, kind of in the beginning of 2021, things were looking good. My channel was growing, subscribers were going up, um, views were going up, everything was looking good. But since then, things have been moving in the other direction, kind of going down. Um, I'm still getting subscribers, but not at the same rate. Views are going down. So what happened? Well, I stopped making videos for a while, but you know what? It's okay. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you probably know that about a year ago, actually this, a year ago in March, um, I had surgery for cancer. This kind of kept me from making videos. I didn't get them out as frequently as I wanted to, and it's been a little bit of a recovery process. So I've been going to the doctor a lot. Um, and actually the end of last year, I was getting up at five o'clock every morning for actually 40 days. Um, that's eight straight weeks. I was going into the doctor, laying down on this table, and getting blasted with the radiation. I'm glad to have that done. It really didn't hurt, it didn't feel bad, but it was just something that needed to be done to make sure that, uh, that I was healthy. Right now, things are looking good and I feel great. So in that way, it's been a really good year. It's really nice to see the YouTube numbers grow, but that's not why I make videos. I make videos to learn, to try out new ideas, and to experiment and create things. But the reality is I didn't make the videos that I wanted to make last year, and that's my failure. Too many ideas that were never made, so many things I wanted to try and learn, it just didn't happen. It's okay, because the ideas are still there and I'm feeling super inspired. There's a lot of potential, a lot of possibility. So what am I gonna create? Well, subscribe to my channel to find out. Cause I don't even know yet, but it's gonna be interesting. And comment below to let me know what you think. I really appreciate everyone's feedback, comments, and your support. I was trying to find a, a logo with a WJ. It's it's kind of difficult, I'm not sure. So I just made up something basic and we're gonna go with that. And I may, I may refine it over time. It's made up of individual blocks that animate to form the W and the J and did a few effects on them. And I've done some things in here to create some animation groups that make setting up keyframing and timing a whole lot easier, especially when you're animating a lot of little objects. Um, and I really wanted to show you how that works, as well as a few other things um, with some of the style and we have a kind of a tilt perspective thing. Um, there's a couple different ways that I did that that might be interesting for you. So let's take a look at how I created this logo. Okay, it's logo time. We're gonna create the WJ logo. We're gonna make some blocks, stack them together to create the letters, an outline effect, and then do a little bit of animation to create the, uh, the kind of the sample logo that look that I'm going for. I'm just kind of trying this out and we're gonna see what works. So let's start by adding a background node. And we're gonna use the shape nodes to do this. Hit control space and search for S rect. That's gonna get us a shape rectangle. After the shape, we need to add a render. So hit control space and type S render. And there's our shape render. And we're gonna merge that right on top of the background. And we're gonna move this background right on top like that. And let's take a look. Okay, so the shape is a little bit big. I've played around with the sizes and what works is about 0.05. So if you go to the uh, rectangle, you see the width and height. You can adjust it right here. And we're gonna set both to 0.05. The logo is gonna be four blocks high. So it's kind of like a Minecraft thing. We're stacking, building up. So we're gonna need four merge nodes for each of the blocks. We're gonna add those in like this and we're gonna connect them together. Now we're going to take the output of the shape renderer and put it into each of the merges. And let's put a background down here to set the size. And for these backgrounds, you want to set the alpha um, to zero so that no black is showing through. And let's merge the last one in. We're building up kind of a stack of blocks and we're going to reuse this a few times. After the last merge, we're going to add a transform node. And this is going to enable us to move everything around. So now all we need to do is shift the blocks with the merges. So let's take the top merge and we're going to move it up. Select merge one and slide it up a little bit. Select merge two and we're going to just we're going to bump it up in there. And you can um, just want to make that the gap go away. And you can hit control, hold down the control key as you slide it. And that's going to get you more finer control. Take merge four, we'll just move it down. Merge three. And all you have to do to do this, I'm just clicking in the, the Y field and sliding. That's how you can move it real easily. Let's hit merge four. Hold down control, click in the Y, and I'm going to slide to the right to adjust this value. Make the gap go away. All right, there's our first stack. Okay, let's copy these nodes. Hit control C and we're gonna paste them so we can use them again. All right, there we go. So this is our second stack and we're gonna take the output of this transform and take it into this merge. Select the merge and hit two in the viewer. And with this transform, we can just slide it over a bit. Okay, there we go. So you can see this is gonna be our W. We're gonna put some stuff in the middle right there. Let's paste it one more time. Control V, 
take the output of the transform into the merge and put the merge in the viewer. And we're gonna just slide it over a bit. Okay, there we go, we got, our, we got three stacks. Now we're gonna take the middle ones and rearrange them to make the W. Select the bottom merge here, take the X value, and we're just gonna slide it over until that gap goes away. The next one up, we're gonna slide it down and over. Now we just need to bring the next ones down. We'll click the second merge from the top and slide it down. Top merge, we're gonna bring that down and over just a bit. And the last stack, we're gonna slide it over and there we go, we have our W. This is the, the first thing done with blocks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna make a J, uh, copy these two stacks right here and paste them. And I'm just gonna shift these around real quick. This is gonna be the W and this is gonna be the J and I just merged them together. Let's make a J and shift these over. All right, there we go. We have a quick WJ. So you can see we have the, the W on this side and the J on this side. So the next thing I wanted to do was to put the outline effect around this. You can kind of see how things are working. A couple of ways to do this is if you go to effects in templates, edit effects. If you saw one of my videos about the border, there's a just border timeline effect that you can use. So let's drag that in. And there's also, if you go into templates, fusion tools, there is a edge control that will do, it'll do something similar to probably work for you as well. But I'm going to use my uh, border effect here. And what we need to do first is take this background and take the alpha down so that you, it's gonna find the edges for this. And we're gonna connect it up to the just border. So you can't see it there, but it found the outline. Let's change the color. And you see we got an outline around it. So I'm gonna want my outline to be white and we're gonna take the fill and bring it all the way down. So all we're gonna see is just the outline of the WJ. After that, we're just gonna add a soft glow. And let me adjust the size a little bit here. It's kind of a little bit too glowy. We're gonna turn it down a touch. Okay, now it's time to animate these. And this is where it gets interesting because we're gonna do a little trick here that's gonna make the animation a lot easier. We're gonna set up an animation and then we're gonna be able to reuse this animation real easily across all of the squares. It's gonna be really quick. So we're gonna take each block and move it around to create our animation. So let's start with our two transform nodes. We're gonna take two transforms and put it right where this first render is going into the merge. The first transform is going to adjust our size and the second transform is gonna adjust the position of the block. So we'll reset everything. Let's go to the first frame and we're gonna start with the size first. So hit transform one, take the size all the way down, keyframe it, we'll go over about six frames and we'll put the size at back at one. So this is gonna take the size from small to large. With the next transform selected, let's keyframe the center position and we're gonna start it out at 0.3. And that's gonna move the block right there and we want it to slide in. So we're gonna go over about six frames and we're gonna set the center to 0.5. And this is our basic animation right now. Okay, so we're gonna smooth this out a little bit. Let's open up the spline editor and go to displacement. I'm gonna read real quick here. Hit this button to see the curves, select everything, and we're just gonna hit F to kind of flatten it out and smooth it a little bit. And let's do the same thing for the transform two with the size, and we'll smooth that out just a bit. We're gonna be able to reuse this. Let's highlight these two and hit Control G to group them. Hit F2, and we're gonna call it slide right. So anytime we want to use slide right, we just, we're going to be able to use this group right here. So let's copy this group and we're going to paste it. I'm going to move it right in between here for the second merge. We're going to change this one to make it slide left. So let's hit F2 on it and we're going to call it slide left. Let's open this group up and on the second transform, we're going to go to the first keyframe where it's 0.3 right there and we're going to change it to 0.8. And that's going to move the block over here on the right hand side. You'll see it sliding over from the right. Now, next, we're just gonna do an up and a down. So we're gonna copy the slide left, paste it, and drag it over this line right here. Hit F2, and we're gonna call this slide down. Open it up, let's go back to frame six. The center position is gonna be 0.5. We always want it to be 0.5, so let's reset that. And the Y position, let's make it 0.8. So it's gonna start out up here, and it's going to slide down through the animation. And the last one is gonna be a slide up animation. So let's copy that, paste it, and drag it right into this line here, and we're gonna call this one slide up. And we're just gonna do the same thing, just change that position a little bit. Open it up, hit this second transform, make sure we're on the beginning frame of the animation. We're gonna set the Y to 0.2. And it's gonna, you see it's gonna be down there and it's gonna slide up. So now we have each of our animations. If we play that, you can see that they come in like that. All right, so next all we need to do is copy these around really simply. So I'm just gonna copy this, I'm gonna hit the slide up and copy it. I'm gonna paste it. And I'm just gonna randomly pick some stuff to places to put it here. All right, now let's do in the next one. Okay, what, okay, let's see, that was slide right. So let's do slide left. 
to do this, all I'm doing is clicking the node area and pasting it and then holding on the shift key and sliding it over one of these lines until it changes colors and that's gonna connect it. So you can see here we have a slide, slide left, slide right. Hit in the node area, paste it, and I'm gonna put it on this one right here. And let's do the up and down. This is a little messy here, but it's just kind of quickly throwing it together to show you how this works. And last one is the slide up. We'll copy that and hold down shift and drag it on top of this line here. All right, let me just uh, organize these really quick. Okay, that's not, that's not uh, too bad. This last one, it looks like we have one more to do. So let's paste that in there and we'll put the slide up right there. Okay, so we have each of our letters. This is the W and the J. So here's what the animation looks like right now. Okay, it's all coming in at the same time. I don't want that. I want each of the blocks to kind of slide in at different times. And we're gonna use the keyframes area to do this. And it's gonna be really quick and really easy. All we need to do is drag and select all of these groups we're gonna hold down the shift key and select the next set, hold down the shift key and select the next set, holding on the shift key. So we're basically, we're selecting all of those animation groups. They're all selected. Now let's go to the keyframes area and zoom in just a bunch. So you can see that these are each of the animations that we set up. And here's the great part. To change the timing, all you gotta do is just drag these a little bit. You can really time it out however you want. This is, a, this is changing the time at which the animation is gonna start. And let's see what we have. I want it to be a little bit slow. I'm gonna go through and slow it down just a touch, kind of drag these out. Let each square be on the screen just a little, a little bit more on its own. Once it's set up, you can kind of play with this to get it exactly how you like it. Let's see if that, what kind of difference this makes. So just a couple more things that's almost done. In the animation that I set up, I took this border here and we're gonna take the soft glow right here. And I added a, uh, a dissolve. I took the soft glow on top of the dissolve right that. In the middle of the animation, I just transitioned from the, the outline text back to the white text. Let's take a look at the, what the dissolve looks like there. So I transitioned from there to that. Let's take this uh, background off. So once it, cre once it created the outline, then I kind of dissolved into the white. Okay, uh, two more things. We're going to add a box around here, and then we're going to give it a little tilt. And there's a couple different ways to do that. So let's make our box real quick. We'll just set up a background. We'll give it a color, doesn't really matter. We could add a gradient to it. And we'll merge this in on top of the box and add a rectangle mask onto our background. And then all I did is I just took the rectangle and kind of just lined it up. Out of this merge, I added a transform right there so that we could take the, uh, the W and J and kind of slide it around a little bit to get it exactly what we wanted. That's not lined up in the center, but it's close enough. Um, let's see, we'll add a little rounded corners on that. Okay, so to shift it, to tilt it, what I did was there's two different ways I used to do this. Um, the first way was using the perspective positioner. So outside of this merge 13, hit control space and type in perspective positioner. And we'll look at that. This allows you to kind of stretch things and move it around. And all I did was I put each of these in the corners pretty simply. And I just set the values to zero, one, one. I just kind of, see so you can, that's 1.0. So that's really one to get it up in the corner. Zero, zero, one, zero. So once we have the perspective positioner up, we just kind of shift these. So we're gonna set this to uh, minus 0.1. And you see it move this top left over and we're gonna take the top right and we're gonna put it at 0.9. And you see we have kind of our, our shift or tilt there going on. This way you can get precise because you can put in the exact numbers you want. Another way is to use the uh, transform node. So with merge 13 select, choose open effects, resolve FX transform, select that and then choose this transform right here. Connect up the merge to the transform. And so with this one, you can do the same thing. You can position it around, but there's a control mode. You can have sliders or you can have this interactive canvas. So you can select interactive canvas. You can take any one of these sections and drag it. So let's take the top section and just drag it over a little bit. It's not as precise as the other one, but it's a little bit easier. That's the basic animation. There's a few other things I did in the one that I set up, but this kind of gives you the basics of how I structured it. Okay, there we go. There's gonna be a fresh start for this channel, a new logo, lots of ideas and inspiration. Um, can't wait to see what I'm gonna do next. Gonna be interesting, I hope. Um, thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon.